When it comes to puzzle design, there's a great amount of unwritten rules. But how strict are these rules, and what happens when you break them? I've tried a fair amount of times, and I will say that most rules are in place for valid reasons. But some of my best puzzles have resulted from the process of experimentation and refinement. One of the unwritten rules is that you should not curve cuts which split the puzzle exactly in half through the origin, which are classified as deep cuts. A 2x2 two two is the clearest example of these, since all three of its slices are deep cuts. Have you ever thought about why you've never seen any curved 2x2s? Two 3x3 three three mods with all sorts of wildly curved cuts are abundant and popular, yet no 2x2s. Two this 4x4 four four mod demonstrates the limits of what's possible. The outer slices, which are not deep cuts, are curved, while the inner 2x2 two two slices remain straight. So, what happens when you actually go ahead and break this rule? Actually, I already have. The square one's vertical slice is a deep cut, so you shouldn't be able to curve it, but I did. And the result was a legitimate puzzle that you can fully scramble and solve. The way I would describe it is, if you've never solved any type of square one before, the curved square one is overall easier and more intuitive to solve than the square one. But because I already know how to solve a square one, I actually found the curved square one incredibly tricky. Algorithms you want to do just don't work, so some situations that would be trivial to solve on a square one become actually challenging. Solving it was such a trippy experience that I ended up naming it the Cursed Square One. The Curved Square One was certainly a worthwhile puzzle to make, which made me step back and think, could there be other curved puzzles potentially worth making? I feel that to effectively make puzzles like this, I need to understand the curved deep cut's basic limitations. And nothing would be a simpler example than just a basic curved 2x2. Two while this is a fun experiment, my confidence that I will end up with a scramblable puzzle is actually quite low. Here's why this doesn't work. Let's say we've made one turn. Because these corner pieces protrude past the center line, they can't actually turn past each other. So most of the puzzle's turns will be physically blocked whenever the curve 2x2 two two is not in its solved state. To increase the chances of me getting meaningful information out of this experiment, I'm going to make two extra variations. The first will have two curved cuts and one straight cut, while the second will have two straight cuts and only one curved cut. My goal is to see if any of these can actually be scrambled, or if they're all bandaged to the point of being trivial. I printed all of the parts on my Artillery Sidewinder X1, which was my main printer throughout last year. You can see that the parts are on rafts. This is because the Sidewinder has a slightly bowed glass bed, which is very frustrating to level manually. Combined with the dimensional accuracy on Z being different from X and Y, these issues have prompted me to pivot into setting up a Prusa Mark IV so that I can work on upgrading the Sidewinder. I've been using the Prusa for a few weeks now, and I really like the print quality, but I'll go in more detail in a later video. These puzzles were printed in Inland Black PLA. I used to buy it because it was cheap at Micro Center, but since they've raised the price, I don't know if I'd recommend it at this point. It's okay, but not amazing. In order of increasing hardness, we have ABS, then PLA, and finally PETG. So while it's not as bad as PETG, PLA is still somewhat annoying and time consuming to sand. I'm working on getting my new Prusa set up for ABS printing, but that's not going to be for a few months so I'll have to deal with PLA for just a bit longer. If these curved 2x2s were bigger, I'd belt sand them, but instead I went with my older technique of sandpaper on a sanding block followed by a nail file. What matters the most when sanding parts is how they feel to the touch. They should feel really smooth, even if some areas of the face are still a bit glossy. If I wanted to get the gloss back, I'd spray paint the puzzles with clear coat and then use a heat gun to dry the paint but for just an experiment like this, I'm not going to bother. The curved 2x2s are extension mods, meaning 3D printed parts are glued to a base puzzle. That would be these 24mm Mini Ishin 2x2s, which I bought several boxes of from a member of the Twisty Puzzles forum several years ago. I'm running out of them, so I'll see if they're still being sold. If not, then I'll explore alternative options. 
guess you'll find out by the next time I make another 2x2 extension mod. The Mini Isshin 2x2 is useful mainly because of how small it is. The mechanism is acceptable, but not incredibly robust, so I wouldn't recommend making giant extension mods from them. I think even the cross screw cube was a bit of a stretch. These mini Isshin's are great for smaller mods where you really need a compact base puzzle. But if you're making a bigger mod, it will be better to get a larger and more robust 2x2. For glue, I like Gorilla Super Glue Gel because it holds well, doesn't get everywhere, and takes a minute or two to set. This actually came in handy during this assembly since several times I got tripped up and accidentally glued on the wrong piece. Since the glue hadn't fully hardened, I was able to pry the pieces back off if they hadn't been on for too long. I don't necessarily recommend doing this as you can definitely damage the 2x2 if you pry too hard, but in this specific case it turned out fine. The Mini Isshin 2x2 turns well, so it makes sense that these curved 2x2s also turn quite smoothly. However, there isn't really any corner cutting, since the base 2x2 has a primitive mechanism and no Florian holes. Not that anyone would be speed cubing these anyway. I cut the stickers on my Silhouette Cameo 3 and then stickered the three puzzles. Now that the curved 2x2s are complete, it's finally time to see if any of them can be scrambled and solved. Right after this, B-roll. Before I try scrambling the curved 2x2s, let me know in the comments below, which of these three do you think can actually be scrambled, if any? I'm going to be looking at these in order of descending amount of curved cuts. So let's first pick up the cube with three curved cuts. So this is the one I have the least faith in actually working out. So let's see what we can do. All axes are identical, so it doesn't matter if we turn this way this way or the final way so we turn this once the only other move available is this turn we turn it once can't do anything turn it twice can't do anything three times still nothing and we're back all right let's turn it another time can't make any additional turns and this scenario is going to be the same as turning it once, where we can turn this axis and nothing can be reached. So yeah, this version of the curved 2x2 with three curved axes cannot be scrambled. This is purely just for decoration at this point. But I expected this, and the goal of the experiment was to see if having some amount of straight cuts would help. So let's put this back and go to the one with two curved cuts. Okay, so this has two types of turns. This has a curved turn, which is identical to the other curved turn, and has a straight turn. So let's do the curved turn first. We turn this, nothing else is available. 
Okay, we made a double turn and now the straight cut is available again. And then obviously nothing's available here. So, we've done this. We turn it once. Can't turn anything. Twice. Nothing lines up. And then three times is going to be the same as once. Okay. So, nothing can be achieved by going first with this curved axis. Now let's try the straight axis. We turn it once. You can make this turn. Nothing else. Again, double turn. Uh, let's you make the straight turn again. And then nothing there. So we're here. We can turn this. Can't make any other turns. We can turn this. And then the only other thing we could do is... Oh, can we do anything? Okay, so I don't believe this axis gives us anything else. Okay, so we're back to here. How did we get here? I think we just made those turns, right? And here we are back to Saul. I need to look into this one a bit more uh, just on my own time because I'm not sure if what I just did was actually a scramble or if it was basically just the same sequence of moves but without a significant amount of branching paths. So I'll look at this after I check out the final one. This one is at worst just a 2x2x1, two by two by right? Because turns on this axis are not restricted. So let's see if this additional curved cut adds anything to the 2x2x1 two by two by solve. Okay, no. So it looks like no matter what you do, you'll always be able to make this turn and pair all the pieces back up. So... This is unscramblable. This is a 2x2x1, two by two by essentially. And this was the most interesting puzzle. So I'm gonna play with it a little bit longer and then get back to you on whether I think it's actually scramblable. All right, I've gone ahead and documented all of the turns you could make on this puzzle, starting by turning the straight layer. So this one. We can start off with a U and then an F2. Then from there we can do a U prime or an F2. And then from here we can't actually do anything, no matter how we turn it. So we have to go back by doing F2, U, and now we're here. So our other option is U2. And then R2, and then U. So this gets us into this position, which is like vaguely like checkerboard-ish. Um, so from here you can make either an R2 or an F2, but no matter what you do afterwards, you can't make any additional turns. You have to go back to the original state. And I believe that's it with regards to the state space. Like, I checked all of these pads and there's really nothing else you can do. So from here we have to basically just go back the way we came. Uh, or we could go the other way since technically it's symmetrical. So instead of doing U prime to go back, we could just do U and then F2, U2, R2, U. And yeah, so my conclusion, at least from my investigations, is that this puzzle also does not scramble because the only way to get back from the scrambled state 
is to take either the same exact way you used to get there or to just use the mirror image, which I don't think counts. So while this puzzle did give me more of a challenge than I expected, the conclusion is unfortunately that none of these three puzzles are puzzles. They are all just decorations. They're interesting mathematical problems, right? But I mean, I'm probably never gonna pick these up ever again. Did any of this surprise you? Was there one that you really thought was gonna be able to get scrambled? Let me know. Now, does this mean that it's the end of the road for the curved deep cut concept? Not necessarily. As we saw earlier, this uh, curved square one was a pretty substantial puzzle and one that you can legitimately scramble and solve. So the key takeaway from this experiment is, while at its base level, the curved deep cuts might not work, you can make modifications to it and not necessarily make the puzzle revolve entirely around the concept, but just use it to your advantage in creating a more challenging experience. One thing I want to try in the future is to maybe see if curving cuts on a skew will do something differently. Because remember, all of this experimentation and even the curved square one has been with just cuboid geometry, right? Like you have cuts at 90 degrees and a vertical cut. So likewise here, this is all at 90 degrees. But a skew has different geometry, right? Like you turn this by a different amount of degrees. So I want to say that these results are not necessarily universal and that they're mainly for face turning cubes. So I do believe there is still room for more exploration, but for me personally, this was very useful to find out. And honestly, I was expecting none of these to work anyway, but I didn't expect this one to be able to scramble as much as it did. So that was definitely a welcome surprise. Are there any other experiments you'd like me to try out? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.